My name is Simon Beckett. I'm the author of The Chemistry of Death. It's a thriller whose central character is Dr. David Hunter. He's a scientist in a rather arcane field, which is known as forensic anthropology. Uh, I got the idea for the novel from a, an article I wrote back in 2002 when I went to Tennessee. The body farm is the only, one of, uh, the only place of its kind in the world. There's nowhere else quite like it. Um, that's because basically it uses real human bodies uh, for its research. One of the main points of forensic anthropology is to investigate the time since death uh, of a murder victim. Um, that's crucial in any murder investigation because obviously once you find out when a victim died, you can find out who could have possibly done it, who the, which suspects can be ruled out and also which suspects are looking more and more likely. Unfortunately, it's not an exact science and the longer it is since the victim died, the harder it is to actually pin down, which is where forensic anthropology comes in. Because a pathologist, although they, they can tell an awful lot of things about a recently deceased corpse, um, when it comes to one that's been dead a little bit longer, sometimes weeks, months, years even, and that's in a, perhaps in a, a pretty bad state of decomposition, then they can be, it's not really their field of expertise. A forensic anthropologist, that's what they specialise in. Uh, it's quite an arcane science, um, it's quite a gruesome field, but it's good work, it needs doing. Um, and talking as a novelist, I found it fascinating because it's a, it's a whole, whole new world out, out there that's, you know, that's right for stories. So we were there quite early in the morning, it was about seven o'clock. Uh, the sun was quite low, so it's still quite cold at this time. Um, and the first thing we saw when we walked in was a maggot trail. Um, now we'd heard about these, and, um, but it's, it's one thing hearing about them, it's something else actually seeing something in front of you. And it looks quite odd because it's a long um, a line of maggots just crawling in a conga trail right across the ground. Everybody comes in, looks straight down on the, fl at the floor on these obviously, and then automatically looks back up the hill to see where they're coming from, which is obviously a body. Um, and that's where I got the opening scene from for the chemistry of death because this is where the uh, the Yates boys were walk walking along, see the maggot trail, follow it back to its source and discover the body of Sally Palmer. I think being a, being a journalist does help um, when it comes to writing novels because you've actually been there, I've been to the body farm and, and seen it, uh, which is what an awful lot of people don't aren't able to do because uh, it was quite, I was in quite a privileged position because very few people are actually permitted through the gates. Um, there is that aspect of it that as a journalist you are allowed to go to a lot of places that otherwise you wouldn't be and to see things firsthand and to talk to people like police officers, crime scene investigators, forensic scientists that a lot of people, a lot of perhaps a lot of writers otherwise would find it difficult um, gaining access to because uh, it's, it's a closed world to a large extent um, so it can be you know the, the two being a journalist and being a novelist do complement each other extremely well. On my last day um, one of the scientists came up and told me to put my tape recorder down gave me a pair of overalls and suggested that I help some of the students carry out a body recovery so for the final afternoon I was down there in the grave helping exhume a, a corpse basically which which was quite a unique experience um, and when I came back to the UK the entire you know the week I spent there quite stayed quite with me and gradually I became quite um, obsessed if you like with the idea of writing a novel whose central character was a forensic anthropologist uh, who'd learnt the techniques that he used at the body to farm who'd actually spent time there but who worked outside America and as far as I was aware, this would this was quite unique. I didn't think anyone had done anything quite like this before, um, and that's how I got the idea for Dr. David Hunter. Uh, he's he's a wounded individual as well. I didn't want to write anything that was just a clinical forensic novel um, where there's lots of descriptions of autopsies and corpses and all the rest of it. I wanted to write something where the human element was much more to the front of it, um, and in which case I needed a character who was actually quite vulnerable, who'd suffered his own tragedies. Um, and who was basically trying to find his own way back into some sort of some sort of life, um, and the novel is, is as much about David Hunter coming back to life as it is really about the actual crimes that he uh, that he investigates. It was very important for me that the novel should be frightening. Um, a lot of thrillers aren't as frightening as they should be, really, in my opinion. And I really wanted the chemistry of death to have a, an oh my god factor. So for people who are reading it to be on the edge of the seats, not to want to put it down because they're frightened what's going to happen, but they've got to read what, what they've got to find out what's going to happen.